Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to paint today along the lines of our Alla Prima pe uh, playlist. So if you're looking for some more wonderful lessons on this, we're going to do this all on the Alla Prima uh, playlist. Today I'm going to uh, do onto this board here. This is a, um, I believe it's a 10 by 13 board, and uh, I'm going to do a Heritage Rose. Your heritage rose. I got a couple of photos over here that uh, I'll use for inspiration. I'm not going to copy them. I use them for inspiration, especially if I'm painting all the prima. If it's all the prima, I like to stay a little bit more, a little bit loose with it. But uh, I posted the other day on one of our groups this uh, orange rose, and uh, this is one I did in 2012 that uh, was very popular at that time. And it was really what I did was I took a, a, a John Singer Sargent's uh, technique of uh, brush strokes, his brush calligraphy, what's called drawing with the brush, and uh, combined that uh, with some of the, uh, what have we called a heavy side load technique I was doing at the time, and created this technique that allowed you to create this wonderful look to a rose. And this was, you know, eight years ago. And I showed it, uh, I, was, I, I posted it up the other day, and it got such a great reaction. So I thought I'd show you how I would modify that maybe a little bit today, and we'll paint that with an Ola Prima using uh, the new um, Derivan Open Medium, which is what I want to do with a lot of these videos here in this Ola Prima playlist. So you look for the Ola Prima playlist. Now, don't forget to go over to the JansenArtStudio.com. We have a whole new website we're building. So there's a few things that are, you know, not are still not up. But it's so easy to navigate. Those of you who have questions about supplies and you know, what it is I do, and you want to uh, have some pages that you can watch the videos really easy. It's all free over there. Just uh, go click on to that website. You can look at the videos. They're all in their playlist. They're all in different pages, supplies, and there's going to be a whole lot of other things. Plus, if you go to, um, the, you know, you click the free videos, go down, and uh, the whole new menu opens up. But there's a whole thing on mixing, color mixing. Some of you are asking me questions about the six color set and how you can make different colors. There's lots. There's over 60 background colors that you can make and, and uh, you know, articles there on warm and cooling of colors and, and uh, making different greens and stuff like that. It's all over there. It's all free. Go take a look and you have a good time, okay? All right. So the background that I made here is uh, black and white and a tiny bit of uh, yellow and pine green this time. So it's a little bit more of a gray kind of color. And uh, I keep it real light around the seven. So I have a couple of photos of roses. I'm not gonna copy those at all. I'm gonna use them to express warm and cool tones. <clears throat> Excuse me, warm and cool tones. And um, where the temperatures are going to be, you know, where you're going to place your shadows and lights. And it's really quite interesting, the difference between the real warm colors that you have of the white rose part of it and the dark one. Now, the Heritage Rose is a rose that we grow here at our studio. And, of course, it's part of our Heritage paint line and stuff as well. So uh, we use this rose quite a bit. All right, so what I'm going to do, here's my colors. I have it out on the glass palette. I have a little bit of the... Dervan medium out. I have some of the uh, extender out, nice dirty from uh, that elk that I painted back there, so it's a little bit dirty, but that's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. I have my long handle brushes, and um, I'm going to be using a lot of my uh, number eight. That's one of my a, a good favorite one for this kind of technique. But I have a couple of smaller ones out, even a couple of small synthetics that I used to do a lot of the petal edging technique years ago with when I wanted it more uh, precise. So I have those uh, particular brushes out here as well. Um, Color-wise, I have the uh, Hansa yellow, Darulite yellow, <coughs> excuse me, yellow oxide. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little frog in my fr uh, throat there. Yellow oxide, burnt sienna, naphtha red light, the pine green, um, phthalo blue. This is going to be a major uh, painting color today for the uh, um, the uh, white rose. This is medium white. Now, medium white, you don't have to have it. Medium white is a color we put out premix one because I do use it a lot. Uh, so we premixed it out, but it's titanium white plus a little bit of raw umber and uh, yellow oxide and you take it up to about a value seven and a lot of times when I teach white roses I use a medium white as an intermediate because one of the problems that we have as artists is we just keep in, in keep putting on and putting on and putting on white and everything becomes white and so 
when I have students that have that kind of problem, I have them paint with medium white, and I only let them use white towards the end of the painting, and they can see what it is. We have to use the rules of, when you're painting a white rose, you have to use the rules of what is called simultaneous contrast. Um, what that is, is that... Um, um, let when you're you know you see one color it'll look like a different color on a background as opposed to what it looks like on the dark well let me just show that here let me just see if i can show that to you to to you here for just a second i'll put some out here medium white out here okay and um this is medium white okay when i put medium white out next to this white where you look at it here on this white well actually let's put it over here into uh, this white. Let me grab one of these pages here. We'll put that up here like this. And uh, pardon me for not being too prepared to do this, but <laughs> you know, I like showing you guys all kinds of different stuff, and I tend to go off on little tangents sometimes, but it's a lot of fun what we do. Now, so this is called simultaneous contrast. I've mentioned it before on other videos. It's also in its in its pure things. I took I studied physics in college and stuff, and it's it's also known as one of the proper we call there called chromatic induction. Um, but what it is is if I put this medium white here, which is a value seven, and I put it out here, it'll look uh, fairly dark, right? Let's move it right back down here where we can push this right over here, and it looks dark because of the background here. See, it'll look fairly dark. But if I put this over here right over here onto this, uh, the dark background here, they'll look like two completely different colors. It'll look lighter over here and darker over here. It's the same color. You saw me use the same color, okay? So that is, that is called chromatic induction, or what we call in the art world, we call simultaneous contrast. It's the eye of See, well, your eyes like a camera. White justifies all the time. It's looking for the lightest colors, the lightest values. That's what the human eye does. And so it's tending to look at this. And so when I see so much dark, it takes some of these other colors and lightens it up. And that's why you see so many of the old Dutch masters and everything that painted, you know, a, a lot of light colors and their pigments weren't all that great. They always throw them on dark backgrounds. And you can always see that in dark backgrounds, if they really want to make their colors pop off, an artist will use dark backgrounds as opposed to light backgrounds. Okay, Light backgrounds, so they tend to make the colors look a little darker, a little softer. Dark backgrounds tend to make them have a little bit more punch. So that's why a lot of artists uh, use those. Um, all we have to do is we just have to know that, that, that that's happening. Now... So if I'm in a painting here and I'm working with something, how do I make it lighter, right? How do you make something lighter without physically adding a whole bunch of white? And this is one of the questions that I answered in the Rose painting series so many times. But if you're not ready to hear it, you won't. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Until you paint quite a few mistakes with your roses of using too much white... What I'm saying now won't make any sense to you. But if you've painted some of the roses and yours look flat because you've got too much, you know, there's just all white. It's all a blob of white, right? That happens because you lose your shadow. And like I said before in one of the last videos, one of the last roses we painted for the Christmas on the Christmas playlist, that the shadows are the most important part of the rose. Because those shadows, because of chromatic induction or simultaneous contrast, makes your lights look lighter. That's, the, that's one of their jobs. Does that make sense? Not only does it give it form, okay, because we know light and dark gives form, but it gives it, makes those lights, and most importantly, look lighter. And so if I'm going to paint this rose, one of the things I, I and I'm going to paint a white rose, I start analyzing what kind of whites, what's the quality of the white I'm going to use, how much white I'm going to use. Am I going to drop the lower part of the painting to the dark and leave the upper part of the painting to the light? Because how I'm going to paint that background is going to control everything I put on top of it. Because the background is the most controlling color that you have in your painting because it will, it will affect 
your colors. It'll make light colors. If you put dark backgrounds, it'll make light colors and bright colors appear lighter and brighter than what they actually are. And if you're a light background, it'll be reversed because your human eye justifies those colors. Okay, so some things to to uh, consider, you know, as you're as you're putting out and and working these colors and everything. So today, what I'm going to do is, uh, so I'm going to work this out and I'm going to work a a technique with you, and we'll have a bit of. We'll have a bit of fun, see how we're going to do it. So we're not going to copy these, but I'm just going to show you. Um, I'm going to do a brief sketch here, too, because some of you want to see kind of like a brief sketch. So let's run through what it is that we do as an artist if we're going to do a rose, okay? First thing that you're going to do is you, uh, first thing, I'm just going to take a little burnt sienna, and I'm painting on glass. This is my favorite surface to paint on. This is a quarter-inch tempered glass. You'll see all of this. I'll talk what, quite a bit of this in the a la prima series because we're starting this up for 2021 i'm going to run it for basically all year long here because a la prima is the key painting technique uh today we'll talk about what is the rules of a la prima for oils as opposed to rules for a la prima for acrylics we're going to talk a lot about us, uh, this stuff here in uh in this upcoming year but um so you better subscribe to the channel make sure you don't miss any of it right and please hit that like button if you if you want to see more of this stuff and comment i like your comments okay all right so the first thing i'm going to do if i'm going to sketch a rose is i decide its size is going to occupy here how much negative space that's the space of the of the painting that doesn't have design to it how much negative space and today in contemporary art there's a artists leave a lot more negative space in the old days when I started painting in the 70s, it was, you know, you leave about 20, 25% of your background in what is called the negative space, allowing it to breathe. And today you can, you could have a small flower and a huge background. You could have, you know, 50, 60% in negative space. So I start to decide basically how big I'm going to do a rose by doing a circle if I want it to be facing us. So I'm going to do this one a little bit more as a circle right here, like this, okay? And then more of an oval if I want to turn it. The next thing I decide as I am, uh, you know, working at what I'm going to be doing is I, de I decide the gaze. Now, what is it that gives the gaze of the rose? The center. So if I want this rose to gaze this way here, I'm going to make sure my center spins up this way. Now I'm going to open this rose up a bit more for you so we can paint those center petals. So I'm going to drop the center down this way, reduce the height of the bowl here, and that turns the rose towards you, okay? So, and but by putting that that way, my rose is going to gaze that way. Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to take... And the bull shadow. Where's the bull shadow? The bull shadow through here will determine just how far your reaching petals and stuff are coming out. But look how wide those guys are there. Now, I may want to do them that wide or not. I'm not sure yet. I'm So I'm going to put this bull shadow down here. Now, your shadows are some of your most important things, right? They're your most important things, those shadows. Now, I'm doing them here with a burnt sienna and a green. Uh, that's just kind of a nice dirty kind of a gray color that I like to use. It's what I use a lot in my leaves and everything. So I'm going to uh, tie those together. Sometimes I'll just take some of that color and I'll throw it uh, out into the background just to get that out there. Now sometimes I do, when I do all the primer like this, I do absolutely smooth backgrounds. Sometimes I move my backgrounds around a little bit. I like to do I like to do both um, here. Right? You're an artist. You should explore all the different ways that you can that you can do stuff. You know, let's put one back down through here, and may, maybe we'll do something back down through here. We can even just do a single rose composition just to show you real quickly. You know what one of these compositions will be like. You know, um, generally when I do the real long videos on YouTube, they're not very popular, and so. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to show you guys everything. I love doing them because I love teaching. But, uh, you know, some they, the longer, see, that's the whole thing is what you're going to do on, on YouTube. The longer the video, the less people watch it all the way through. And then that causes your ratings to go down. You know, and uh, so 
you know, I love doing it because that's what I, I really think we, we you gain the most of. I just love watching them and doing them. So if you do like them, guys, make sure that you hit those like buttons and help share the video and comment and stuff. That helps us a lot. And we can do longer videos, okay? So we keep our ratings up. Okay, so maybe I'll put one here. Maybe I'll put something there. I'm not real sure. Then I also decide, do I want to manipulate anything into the background? And... I was thinking, well, maybe today we'll go, maybe today we'll do something really different with our knife again. You know, I love this thing. I'm going to take a little bit of my blue, some of my medium white. I'll put that here, maybe a bit of the burnt sienna in, into this. And I love manipulating colors and pushing colors into the background. Um, you know, one of the colors that I did not put out that I should put out here. My cool colors. Jeez. I was in there going, God, that palette looks a little bit light today. Yeah. I don't have the cools, the, the quinacridone violet and the red violet that I, want, I I really like as well. The red violet here. So we'll go ahead and put those out. I get, I, I like using the jars here with my little knife. And, uh, you know, the thing is about using the jars like this, if you get the jars of paints, you know, they come in a bunch of different sizes. My daughter runs that for us and they come in a bunch of different sizes but if you're done at the end of the day you can scoop that paint back up and put it back into these jars you know as long as it's not too contaminated you can do that without a problem but let's just put a little bit of that violet in through here and I like this to run I like when I do this kind of stuff I like it not to be super mixed up but uh, let's just put a bit of that color right down you know, I love this stuff, uh, pulling this stuff down like this. This is the contemporary look of painting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I paint all different kinds of ways. And that's what we do as artists, right? We paint all different kinds of stuff. And, uh, let's just push this out a bit here. And the, uh, the, the thing is, is I try to explore, I like that little bit more aqua color there. I try to explore some different types of uh, colorings, uh, colorings, textures, different things. I don't always paint the same, and I try not to paint the same, and which also makes it really difficult for you to try to copy and emulate it. Uh, but I, I try to change quite a bit so that I can create or I appeal to the maximum amount of people or customers that, that uh, I can that's what we try to do. That's what artists try to do. So let's put that in there. Now let's put in some, let's model in some color. Model means to not over mix. I'm going to take some of my violets here. I'm going to mix a little bit of this uh, open medium into it. And uh, I'm going to model some of the darks in through here, right up into those blues right up into these pines and greens here. And we're gonna add this medium. This medium will keep it wet here quite a while here. And uh, which was really interesting because I've been painting with this medium uh, all year, been testing it for the company and painting it with it all year, trying it. And I just absolutely love it. And um, one of the things that I did, that elk that's back there behind me, was I painted that with the medium and I showed that. That's a video that's still coming. We have to edit that and get that still coming. But I went back to, uh, and then I went off and, and did stuff with the grandkids and everything and came back about five days later and the medium on my palette, on my glass palette, I forgot to clean it, which I always do, but the medium on my glass palette was still wet and usable, hadn't dried at all, five days. Okay, so it just shows you that you have a medium, you have an acrylic that dries really fast, you have a medium that dries in, in so slow. So you've got to figure out the balance of paint versus that medium about where you live. Does that make sense? Okay, so but that medium just doesn't dry. Give it a test, put it out, and see how long it takes for that medium to dry. So then it's just a matter of figuring out how to incorporate that medium into your technique because it doesn't dry. Does that make sense? Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to push some of that around. I'm going to push this down into the cooler part of this rose back down here. You notice this, I just love the feel of this medium. And I love this kind of stuff, this movement. This is the movement of your pigments now into the wet form. That's the one of the things that the Olaprema can do. Now, this up here isn't really Olaprema because I didn't add anything to it. And uh, it's already dry. You can see it's already dry. But wherever I put the medium, it's going to stay wet here, okay? So, but that's okay. I can put that medium into anything later on and come back. So let's put that in. Let's go in just a touch darker, cooler, a little bit heavier right here where we want that center. And I'm going to put in some textures into this as well. That will make it, uh, if we're painting all a Prima, if you get too many textures, though, right in the very beginning, that makes it really hard for you to paint later on because the paint builds up and then every time you touch it it either moves too easily or it disappears so you know i'm going to put it right here into the center where i'm going to see the darkest part of the center of the rose and i'm not going to move that too much um, but out here where i'll be building petals no i'm going to keep the paint relatively thin so it doesn't disrupt everything that i've painted before if that makes sense okay Let's come over and let's warm this up. Let's add a little medium to it. Let's take a little yellow, maybe a little bit of our green and burnt sienna, the colors that I really like here, but we'll go a little bit more yellow here. Add some of the medium. Now, sometimes if I want this thinner, I'll add extender medium to it now also. This will give me a nice thin coating of nice warm undertone here. So you see I have the warm and the cool going here. And I'm just going to push that out here a bit. So I'm going to give a warmer light side to my flower. And uh, then I'll let it go right back into some of the cool colors. I love the color, the underworking of the rose here is what gives it so so inter so much interest. And you're working at these tones and work, you know, looking at these tones. Let's put a little bit of that. I know it sounds crazy, but we can do this. We're artists. We can be a little little bit crazy. Let's put a little green in there. I love in my commission work and stuff, it's one of the things I always make sure I increase into the white rose because the white rose is such a neutral rose. I increase a lot of temperature into it and I put greens, especially if I'm going to have leaves, I put greens into my white roses because the greens anchor the make a common color between the leaves and the rose. And that's one of the things that we got to do. Okay, now let's come in and let's pull in some lights. Let's pull in just a little bit of the light. I want to, and I'm going to stay away from that white there for a minute. Made that mistake. I don't want to go any lighter than this uh, medium white, this value seven. As a matter of fact, because I'll have that habit of doing that and I don't want you guys to do that as well. I'm going to move that white back up out of the way and paint with it over here, the medium white. I'm going to add some medium to it here. And we'll come out here and we'll just lightly sketch just a bit of our petal here, of what we want to be the outside of the petal. Now, in the old days, I would use a brush to work a brush back and forth in there like that. I do this. I would pinch wipe my brush and I would step back and I would work the brush to work some of that movement there because and especially uh, so you if you like that orange rose this is what I did on that orange rose I moved the color back and forth like that in a real super casual one I use my hand now and I prefer to use my hand but you know we're and this is this is how you grow this is how I painted eight years ago I didn't use my hand as much as as I do today uh, let's put a lighter one here. Now, the back of the rose here, you won't see too much. And this would bother a lot of people because they say, okay, it's disappearing. I need to add white to make it show up. No, don't do that because you'll destroy your rose. Let it disappear right back through there. Just let it disappear. We want to work the, the movement of the rose, though, in and out. So our petals are going to go in and out. Here's our bowl. As a matter of fact, let me just redefine this bowl right here. This is where we're going to go with our bowl. And I'm going to use lots of nice paint in the painting of this rose. That's going to be our bowl. So everything we're going to do is going to be pulling right down to where that bowl. Let's put just a bit of this over here. I don't want to do too much. 
just a bit of that over there. That's where it's going to go into the bowl. So you see the petal coming down into the bowl, coming down into the bowl. Here we'll have the center over it. Now, I'm going to try not to use my fingers as much to show you guys, but we will. I will pull some of the movement. See, I like the pull and push and pull. This is what I used to do a lot with the brush. Set the fusion down and do what I call the push and pull this way, like that. So I get this nice, and you get this really interesting movement of color through there, see? Now let's take a little bit more, and I start looking to the, like the outside edges of the, don't add white, you know, let this disappear, the outside edges, pinch wipe your brush, touch it into a little bit of some of your other colors, just to dirty that up a bit, just a bit of that in there, and let's do the push and pull, just like that, into that, keeps that movement around, try not to get into that center dark there. Okay, I can redefine if I do this, and this is where I started to do the petal edging technique, is I'd pick up, I'd slide my brush and I'd pick up extra, extra light color right in through here. I can roll the brush down and draw a petal edge here, like that if I wanted to pop that petal edge out a little bit more. I then wipe the brush here. I just touch it into a dirty it up some of the other tones that I had there. And a lot of times I would lift off and stop right before, wipe my brush because I picked up stuff, and pick up pick up little bits of paint right before the edge so that so that white stays out there on the, the edge. That started giving me a little bit more uh interest into the rose itself. So then I start looking at petals, and this is a nice petal right in here, how that goes out and folds and turns in. And that's what I do. I use roses for interesting petals and stuff like that. So let's paint one kind of like that. It's going to pull down. It's going to pull down here into the, towards the bowl here like this. Now that's a little bit light, but see, staying wet, and if I do a little bit of push and pull, I'll just lightly mix that color just a bit. Let it incorporate. Let's put a little yellow across that too. Sometimes when I add another tone, I will not not always stroke the same way. I'll pull slightly different so that I don't if I keep pulling the same way, it's going to make you stiff. It's going to make the petal stiff and I don't want to do that. So I'll pull just a slightly bit different here. Okay, so let's come in, let's just add a little bit of an edge here, right to that right there. Let's model our brush, a little cool color this time, because I'm over on the shadow side. Let's set it down there and just, just push and pull a little bit to move that color in there like that. So I get that movement in there. Let's put a little bit of the cool color, maybe a bit of that yellow and cool together. It's really pretty, or even a touch of the green makes a nice gray. Let's just drop some of that in here to the roundness of the rose. Take some of that petal out with the roundness of the rose. So you can just small marks and and incorporate that petal into the rose. Now you're doing the outside petals. And normally when I used to do a rose like this, I'd do the outside, then I'd go in and work the inside, and then I'd finish the middle. Uh, and it, so it's kind of like you're bringing it in together this way. That was always the easiest for me. Now... Everything here is really cool. I'm seeing some real light warm pinks up over here. So I'm going to take some light color. Let's add a little medium. Let's go over to our warmer red. Mix some of that up in here. Up to about a value 5 or 6 or something like that. And let's put some of those. That's not quite pink enough. A little bit too light. And let's put some of this warmer pink in on this side as well so we enhance our light and shadow part of the of the uh, thing now if you notice you know so many times you hear me and you hear me rinse my brush especially since i have a microphone a couple of them sitting right over there in my water buckets right underneath there and hear me rinse my brush you don't hear me doing that today i'm not i'm only wiping my brush cleaning it out now this means you have to have heavy pigmented colors because i'm not cleaning my brush I am moving. I'm going to keep my brush wet. If I need anything, I add a little extender to it and I pinch wipe it like this. This is how I used to paint all the time before I went back to acrylic. When I wanted to keep a wet edge to the color, I got rid of water off of my palette because water dries fast. 
And so this allows you to keep a wet edge because the extender dries slow. So see, I can take that, I can add a little extender, tap it into my glass palette like this, work it into my brush, and I can use that if I wanted to, you know, softly pull across something like that, the colors. If I wanted to work these colors together and soften their edge or do what I call blur them out a bit, I can do that, work those, incorporate those colors together, and that looks just like oils. See? That looks just exactly like oils. So, but this is allowing me to set up kind of the shape of some of the stuff I'm going to do here onto the rose. Let's come down, let's gray this, and let's put a little green right up into here. We'll gray this, we'll add a little medium white to this, lighten this up, we'll make a, the red violet to green, a little yellow, and the medium white here, and we'll make a grayer petal. You can see the grayer petals right down there, see, on the low side. Let's push that in. We can do a little push and pull here. I pinch wipe my brush. I can pick up a bit of the cooler color. I can stroke that cooler color right against that edge, just like that. Pinch wipe my brush, tap it into maybe in a little bit of pink this time, and we'll set it right down in here, and I'll do the push and pull with the brush. I used to do this push and pull all the time. Then I can go back, and that push and pull just, uh, you know, kind of incorporates those colors together. Then I can pinch wipe my brush and pull through and take off any of the final, you know, stuff that I want to take off. If I feel I need to increase the shadow, I pull through there one more time, like that. I'll pinch wipe my brush. I can push and pull that right there like that just to soften that edge just a little bit, just like that, and push it in. You can do it as many times as you want, whatever you want to do. Let's put a little darker, a little darker tone right back out in here onto this side. And we'll just kind of draw those around here. I'll put a little bit of gray here. Pull out, and this is where I start to, I like, I like this greenish gray. I'm going to add a bit of that to some of this side of the rose over here. So I get a nice variations of tone. I like variations in the tone. So that tone comes up here and slowly disappears. We'll go a little bit more medium white. We'll touch a little bit more medium white up here to the light side. Let's take a soft pink push that right into that on that edge and anything I want to do I pinch wipe my brush like that you can if you feel you still have too much paint type your brush into a little extender take it to your palette and just push a bit so the extender is in there and then come back here and just lightly pull through now you can do the push and pull if you want to get more color movement or you can just lightly lightly pull like that and get a softer movement to the color but I don't like to destroy all of my movement. I can't tell you how, you know, the last, oh, what, the last five, six years I've been painting a lot with my hands. And right now I'm fighting this, oh, I just want to touch that so much because I really do like doing it. But I'm showing you how I painted, like when I did that orange rose and stuff like that. You know, this is how I did it. And this is a, it's a great technique. It's a great technique. It takes longer than it does to for me to do the push and pull and do all of this color manipulation than it does for me to take my hand and go ee, 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 and get that done. You know, but uh, it is a great thing, especially those people that don't like to touch the paint or, um, you know, this is a, that's a great way to do it. Okay, let's come back out here. Let's push some light color, some pink and some medium white and some yellow. Let's come right back out here. Let's push in a different shaped color white petal right out here to the front. And you can see everything stays wet because we're painting with the Derivan medium. Everything is wet in there. Let's come in and let's push in a little bit of pink, maybe a little bit of those yellows. Let's take a stroke right across the edge of that, just right across. That's like a half tone stroke, right? I'm going to pinch wipe my brush. I'm going to uh, thin a little bit of extender into my brush. And I'll set the soft fusion down and just push and pull a little bit of that movement in and out. And see, look at that beautiful movement that gives that, that paint, that petal going in and out like that, see? And the big thing is use the soft fusion brush, set it down very, very flat. Sometimes I'll set it down like this, very flat, and move it like that. And it makes a, a real pretty, 
real pretty uh, pretty rose that way let's go in let's take a let's warm let's even get a little bit of that darulide into some of this pink here we'll go medium white here lighten that up nice really warm kind of a pink and let's deposit some more of that warmer pink maybe go a little bit more red let's push some of that right down there let's add just and this is what I do a lot it's color block it's blocking in push in a little bit more of the orange kind of color just tap that around a bit here okay and so you you've blocked those colors in pinch wipe your brush don't rinse your brush I have no there is no water here whatsoever so because I've been doing that a lot the last couple of years going back to acrylic and rinsing my brush and I'll go in there and do that the second I do that I add fast drying water water's the fastest drying thing I add that to the paint and it'll destroy the ability of doing this I'm just going to mix in a little extender here like this and let's just do a little bit of light push and pull here down to the roundness of the bowl just move those colors kind of together let's move these out into that petal there just a bit there like that I can pinch wipe my brush even put in just a tip of the medium white and pull down through here like that just to give some of that movement into that tone there as well okay and so what I'm doing basically is setting up a warm and a cool and I'm manipulating some of my colors. I'm not, I'm giving some ideas of the petals, but I'm not really painting a whole bunch of petals right now. Let's take a bit of Darulite and Yellow Oxide. And I love, you can see that coming right down in inside that flower there, especially up there onto the light side. And I like that color, color hit into the White Heritage Rose. So I'm gonna add a bit of that in there. See, I can just manipulate that, move that in just like that and I can add that color in there don't have to go back and forth I do it real quick I do a real quick touch it down and then lighten the pressure up if you have too much paint touch it down pinch wipe your brush lighten the pressure and move it through and move it into the direction so some of this I'm gonna to want to touch it down and do what I call spark the color here and I just removed that because I touched it one too many times I love sparks of color like this into a rose. I think that just adds a lot of interest to it. But I'll pinch wipe my brush and I'll lightly pull out because that's the direction of this petal, the movement. I paint the movement. That's the movement of the rose coming out this way, see? Let's put a little yellow oxide, not quite as bright, right out here. So it's not quite as bright, but we'll be up on that warm side there. And that looks pretty good. Maybe we go more towards that yellowy green, slightly more toned down over here. Let's just put a spark of that. See, I love that green pigment into that into that rose too. It's a nice, a, a beautiful white rose. Just changes tone so many times. And I just might leave it like that. Okay, let's go. Let's take some of our burnt siennas and our yellow. Let's put a bit more of our medium in here. You gotta feed the paint medium. If you want it to stay wet, you gotta feed it medium every once in a while. Let's just soften the edge of that color movement right in there. So you cannot tell me right now that that does not look like oils. I'm not painting oils, I'm painting acrylic. The nice thing is, if I decide to switch from an all prima technique right now, if I say, oh, I want it, or if I have to get up and go and I come back um, and everything's dry, I can move right to an acrylic painting technique or reset it again right with its all prima colors. With the acrylics, you can flow back and forth without any kind of problem. And I'll use wet-on-wet, uh, all-a-prima wet, type techniques with acrylic techniques in the same painting and big commission pieces. I'll use them all the time and hopefully in future videos we'll show you guys some of that uh, some of that stuff because it's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm setting up this nice movement and stuff in here. Now there's a couple ways and and basically what I have, let me just set up one more little area here. We'll go with a darker green, medium white, I'll come right back down here and I'll just set up the idea of a lighter petal there. Let's take a bit of our cooler green and yellow using here. We'll just pull right across that edge, pinch wipe our brush, 
set in the push and pull here like that and that'll set up a nice pedal now let me show you just because that's a great little area there let me show you how easy it is to turn that how you can turn that into two little pedals okay i'm going to drop down the size of my brush now sometimes i use the fusion uh this is a number six sometimes i use the fusion sometimes i um use a synthetic I'm going to take a little bit of my medium white, maybe a touch of my white, so it's a bit different. And I'm going to put it up onto the edge of my brush this way. I'm going to slide in so I have it on the edge of the brush. I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to roll it down onto the side of that brush that's there. And basically what I'm going to do is sketch the pedal that I want to have in, that edge that I want to have in on that pedal. See? Then what I do, there's two ways to do it. If I'm on the shadow side of the rose, usually I pull shadow out because shadow is, it's on the shadow side. You want to preserve that. On the light side, I, I usually pull light side out. But I'll take, and I'll usually put just a little extender into my other brush, my other painting brush, and I'll lightly pull out like this and just lightly and put the direction of it leaving just the tip. Sometimes I'll take the tip out like that and leave just a little bit of that petal tip out there like that and that's how i painted that um that uh, orange rose you saw i painted a lot like that i'll put it on and paint out leave just the tips so i go to what i call a two brush technique i have one here that's doing the john singer sergeant's drawing stroke so i will draw the edge here of that and one that's doing the, what I call the eliminating stroke, taking out and leaving just the edge. But this taking out, and you have to make sure, because see, I picked up white. Do you see that on the brush? So that's one reason why I pinch wipe my brush all the time, because I'm taking that white back off here. See, I picked up white. If I don't do that, if I touch again, I'll leave a little light mark right in the center of my petal here. So you pull out, wipe your brush, and pull out again, to remove that so you get just that light edges there and so I come around on the shadow side and do it that way on the light side I do something different I'm gonna add a little bit of white here to this so if I add medium white and white about one to one I take it up to an eight or a nine let's come right up through here I'm gonna leave that petal for just a second let's come right up in through uh, here and just say add another little petal right here like that Boom, let's just pull it right here. Now, the largest petals are out here. These will get a little smaller, so I'm a little bit big there, just a bit. Don't touch the painting, Dave. See that habit? We all have those habits. <laughs> it just came down and bit me again. I'm going to put just a touch of that light color, maybe a little pink, a little dirty here, into my brush, kind of pinch it a little bit. And what I'm going to do is start just short of that petal and pull in. And I'll wipe my brush slightly, and just, and you can tell how light I'm holding this brush, see? It's just barely, barely holding the brush, letting the fusion hairs do their job, that nice soft brush, and pull that along, and just let that come in. Now, sometimes I'll leave those marks. I like those marks. Sometimes I'll accentuate that mark by adding just a little bit more ex uh, extender into it and pull back into that again so I get that translucency again because I'm lifting off I'll lift off some of that light color after I've drugged the light color down so what happens here see is on the light side of the rose I'm pulling light color down on the shadow side of the road I'm pulling shadow out so it's making these petals lighter these petals darker does that make sense okay so you're always building so you don't need to go in there and add white and add white and add white. Don't do that. Your rose will become all the same. You need to think about what is underneath your layers here. As you paint this rose, you need to think about what is underneath your layers and work with what you have that's already there. And use Sargent's little drawing technique to draw the edges of some of these petals. So let's come in. Let's take a light pink here and we're going to vary this we'll put just a little light pink and this is where i now go to my stick here like this and i'm going to come in with just a little light pink onto the edge and i'm going to start to draw the petals i'll draw a couple petals here like this down just like that now 
I would normally pinch wipe my brush. I'm going to put a little, make sure you keep that medium in there, medium or extender. That medium is very important. We're coming into that pinky kind of color there. Maybe I want it pink with a little bit of shadow. I'll put that into the brush. And if I wanted, if I'm on the light side, I tend to pull, just, just pull a couple of times like that. And how much you leave of that light is what makes the edge of that petal, see? If I want the petal to get really light, I'll put the light on like I just did. Like maybe I want to make this one forward right here. So I'll draw a little bit more light right there. And then I'll put that lighter pink right back into my brush. And I'll pull down. And I'll pull down a little farther than what I think here. And that'll be, make the nice light petal to the front of the flower. Sometimes I like to model it with some other colors. Like this is just a little bit of the yellow in there. And I'll leave that modeling. And if I like that, if it's too much, or if I like that, I'll, I'll kind of leave it. If it's too much, I'll put a little bit of the pink color into it. And if, I'm, if I have too much light, I pull from the shadow up. See how it takes it out? So if it's too much light, pull from the shadow up. Don't pull down because you're pulling, you're pulling light down. And if you keep always pulling down... Your rose is going to do nothing but get lighter and lighter and lighter. So if you if you judge, oh, that petal's too light, pull from the shadow out so that the rose stays dark. Does that make sense? Here. Now, see, these are a little bit different techniques than I did on the 30-day rose challenge and all that kind of stuff. Guys, there are so many different ways to paint roses, and I've painted them over my you know, over my career. A lot of frustration. There is a lot of frustration as you breaking habits and all that kind of stuff. But what I want you to do is try what I'm doing here. Get rid of water right out of your painting and paint only with the medium and extender. Use extender to, to thin stuff out as you need and try painting it and keeping everything wet. Let's pull a, another little little angled petal down this way. Maybe a bit lighter. To that so I'll put it right on the edge right on the corner of my brush use just that edge to pull that petal down there like that I kind of like that but maybe a little bit um, let's put a little red and uh, red violet together here some of this I, this is my rose do you see my rose right here do you see that rose okay so that's the rose so I'll pull that right down there like that and just set that petal in Okay, and uh, that looks pretty good. That works pretty good. Let's uh, draw a few other smaller little petals. Maybe I'll take uh, just a bit of this here. And we'll draw, and we can use this just to lightly sketch up and around. That's a little too light. So I'll, I'll stop that. And let's take from the shadow off, take that back off. There. See how I'm pushing up from the shadow. Let's go a little bit softer back through here. Petals into the back are going to be a little softer. Let's move around the rows that way. And I'll do, I'm going to start using some white now because I'm going to start getting small. Okay. And I can start little hits of light petals. Little hits. And you know, this all comes into your technique. Are you going to draw more precision petals or are you just going to spin some color around? And many times I'm going to come up here with some, I love the color quinacridone and the uh, red together. It makes a nice, beautiful red here. And I'm just going to spin some of that around in here right now. Just... See, I'm working my brush right around, spinning that around. I'm getting reestablishing some movement. I'm a movement painter, so I'm going to establish some more of my dark through there and move that out. Sometimes if I can't see petals, and I know... I almost touched it again. <laughs> wow. It's, you see, it habits. <laughs> it's just... I just so love touching my painting here. Um... But anyway, I'll put a little green right here. Let's just soften that exchange right in there. And if I want to go more gray, more towards my gray I have over here, soften that just a bit. 
and I can push and pull or I can do anything to soften. Sometimes I won't even soften that mark. I'll leave it. You know, it depends on how casual that rose is. You know, sometimes I'll just push and pull like that, call it done. Um, let's take a bit of that medium white right over here towards these grays. Let's put some of that gray and that medium white right in here. We have, you know, beautiful light little petal tips that we can see how you can just suggest them. Now, you don't want to paint too long with the same color, so we can add that, and we can add uh, maybe a little touch of a light, a little light highlight hit right there. That Those high, highlight hits just add so much to your roses, to your paintings, and uh, I like those little hits like that. I'll take some of that red and stuff here and soften it out. This little stick that I use, you can tell I, I use it a lot. This little stick that I use is so important because it balances your hand. It gives your hand something to set on. If I, if I really want to paint casual, I don't use my stick. And I step back on my brush and it allows me to paint very casual. If I want to paint a little bit of precision, I use the stick to rest my hand. Then, uh, you know, in the old days, it's the mall stick, the painting stick. And different artists use different things to rest your hand and, uh, you know, be able to manipulate the, the drawing of your petals a little easier here. You know, I like that. Let's, uh, I'm going to pull that color back up with this so I don't lose all of that. See, isn't that a pretty little petal right in there? It just make that's just a pretty little petal. I don't want to do too much to eliminate that petal. I like the highs and lows of little petals and stuff as we get that. Let's go uh, a little bit more into our cooler reds. Let's spin some of those reds down in here first. Then I'll take, if I use the white, that'll keep this very cool. A totally different look. So I'll put a little bit of white into this, and I'll get those kinds of colors that you see right in there. See, see that pretty, real cool light color. I'll spin that in there, and I'll just start tapping little bits of this color. I pick up onto the edge like this, and if I really want to draw, I make that self. I make that just a nice, tiny little edge here, and I'll roll over onto that edge, and I'll I'll draw basically draw the petal with that edge here the petal that I want to do and sometimes I'll flip these over here to the other side draw a petal that's going to come up the other way and you use these and when you use petals for ideas here then I'll pinch wipe that off now see I can't touch it I'll pull there's so much light color into my brush if I touch into there everything will become white so I want to pinch wipe my brush I'll touch a little dark a little bit of my red put that into my brush and then I'm going to pinch wipe it again so I don't have too much color in my brush and I'm just going to pull right along the side of it there and soften that out. So now I got a nice little light hit, nice little edge there that looks pretty good. Let's put let's go just a bit to the other pink side here. A little bit of the yellow and the pink and orange as we come over here to this other side over here, we'll drop another petal right in there. Pinch wipe that brush. Put in some of the cooler color. I'm going to touch this very carefully into the shadow out and lift out. And a matter of fact, I read the shadow that's in the deepest part there and it's really quite a bit of my red violet because I'm into the deepest center part. So I'm going to push some of that in my brush. Pinch wipe lightly. And no. I am not wasting a bunch of paint. How much do you see here? Okay. And in all of painting, I have maybe a dollar's worth of paint out here. So this pinch wiping your brush and working it like that, I'm not wasting paint. Okay. It's not happening. I have one person comment, are you wasting a lot of paint? You know, I used $4 of paint to paint this painting that I sold for $2,500. So that's not bad. That really isn't bad. You're not wasting paint here. I'm going to touch into that shadow and just lift off a bit. Touch my brush, wipe my brush just a minute because I picked up white. And then I'll touch it again. Let's touch a little heavier there. Lift off just a bit and incorporate that petal right into that rose there. Just like that. You see that? So I read 
the direction. If I have too much light onto the pedal, I pull shadow out. If I have, if I want the light to come down further, I pull light down. Okay, I pull light down. Now, I'm going to read right up here. I want a little bit more of a light hit maybe on this one right here. So I'm going to put in a little light hit right there onto that pedal. Maybe I'll touch... I love that quinacridone type color. So I'll touch a bit of that in there. And I start folding petals together and pushing petals together. I'm going to push a lighter, more folded over one right up in here that's going to be kind of my center one right here. I'm going to push that in. Now, in doing so, I got rid of some of my dark center. That's easy. I knew that that was going to happen. But I am a professional, so I don't worry about it. <laughs> okay? So I don't worry about it. It's paint. We can change it. So I'm just going to take from the shadow there and just reset the shadow back into that. Touch that in a couple times, and that sets that petal right there into the rose. See? And so there's all different kinds of ways to do it. But uh, now I'm going to, I'm going to, I like those colors. I'm going to take a bit of these cooler colors and toss them a little further out into this petal right out here. Toss these out here. Now, how do you soften that? Well, this is still wet. And today I would just push it a bit with my finger. But I'm showing you how I did things eight years ago. So I'm just going to pinch wipe. I'm going to put a little extender into my brush. Take it down here. Pinch wipe some of that color out. Okay. I might even put a little medium, maybe a little gray or so into my brush. Just soft, softly. And I want to take the shadow out. So I'm going to pull down this way. Take the shadow out. I could have a little more light color into that. Okay. So I want to take that pink out so I pull down and lift off. And make sure you wipe your brush. Make sure you wipe your brush. Let's just pull across, maybe take some of that out. And pull. I just love the color movements. Now look at all the beautiful coloring and changing that you have in that petal there. See? That's how you do it. And you just slowly build it like that. And you don't... See, I'm not using white. I'm using medium white. And this is starting to become a white rose. We'll get this even more white here in a minute. But we have a lot more building with the white, a medium white we can do. So I have my cool colors, my warm colors. I'm going to come over to the front of the rose here. And uh, let's set up a lighter, a lighter, larger front petal. Maybe cut across this one this way here. We'll set that up. Now I want, since it's going to go down into that bowl, it reads a little pink down into some of those. So I'm going to slide over to some of my pinks right in here. I'm going to push some of that into my brush and deposit some of that right along that edge there of that petal there, like that. I'm going to pinch wipe my brush. I'm going to come back over. I want this petal to be a little lighter, so I'm going to add more medium white. I'm going to redraw the petal here one more time. Now I'm going to pinch white that color. And since I want it to be more white, and less pink, I'm going to pull from the light down. And I'll touch maybe a bit more white. I'll pull from right down. Touch, lift off. Roll your brush off. After about halfway down the petal, roll your brush off so you don't eliminate all your pink. And start leaving some of the pink that's down there. Okay? So you have that. That's really kind of pretty. Let's, uh, I'm going to make it lighter, but I'll do it in steps. Let's put a lighter one right up over here. Now you could curve it like that, which opens the bowl back up just a bit. I like the rise and fall of the petals. I like them to rise and fall. So I push that in. And uh, let's put a, just a touch of that pink right along that edge there. We'll stroke that just right in there. That brings those colors together better. And I'm going to want it a little lighter, so I put light into my brush. Touch and pull down. That's just enough right there like that. I, I Sometimes I love to leave that strokey movement. It all depends. You know, if you want it softer, take that third or fourth stroke. If you want to leave that that streakiness, which I think helps direction and everything else in your petals, then, um, you know, just go ahead and stop. <laughs> you can do that. You can stop, okay? So let's come right up here. Let's take a little bit of our medium. Let's go right into our pinks here. Let's go a light, some medium white, some of our pinks right up here. 
and uh, let's add another another pedal here that goes this that might come this way and uh, you know it's all folding pedals putting them all in you're gonna read you can spin it around more I call these cinnamon roll roses here they can they kind of look like a cinnamon roll for me and so I start to spin those around I'm gonna take a little yellow and some of my quinacridone and stuff and stroke that right in there maybe a touch of green I love green I love what green does to my whites and stuff there. It just neutralizes all of that. So we'll push that one down there. I'm going to put a little extender. And this just cleans out my brush, some of the color of my brush. Pinch wipe it just a bit. And again, I'm not wasting anything, guys. I'm only using a little bit here. And I'll touch it. And I'll wipe my brush. And I'll touch it. And I had this one friend that she kept having a problem and her habit was she touches to a wet towel on the side of her palette. She touched to a wet towel on the side of her product. She found that wet towel cleaned her brush faster. No, because you're adding water back into the system. And you're adding water is actually the color solvent. And what you'll start to do, every instead of building paint like I'm building here, you start pulling holes in the paint. Does that make sense? Because it's the solvent. And so... If you're using this kind of really a la prima, real wet technique like this, and you're using the Heritage, stay out of water. Don't paint with water. You don't need it. Just get into using just the tiniest bit. I'm only using a tiny bit of extender, and there's quite a bit of it here. I use that on my palette here to kind of rinse off my brush and just touch a little bit. And this is, this is how much paint I've used for this whole painting so far that you see here on one paper towel here. That's not very much, okay? So don't worry about that stuff. All right, now let's let's set up a medium white. Let's come over here to our warm side. Let's go, let's lighten up and let's paint more and start shifting this rose a little bit more white. So I'm gonna use a little more paint, maybe not that much paint, but a little bit more paint. Let's draw in a pretty little petal coming down in this way Fold it right down in towards that bowl. Pull it right to the bowl. Lift off before you get to that shadow. Pull in just a bit. Now that's got some beautiful tone right in there. And I don't want to lose that. So there's a couple ways to do it. One is to get rid of some of this medium white out of my brush. Because it's an opaquing white. Whites will kill the rose real fast. And I start in the shadow and I lift off like this. And take some of it off. Then I pinch wipe my brush, maybe get rid of that a little. This pinky water works, or pinky extender works great. Start right down here, lightly lift off like this. And so you, you're preserving that tone. If I want the overall petal to become lighter, I pull down further. Now I kind of like that little hit right there, and I kind of like that movement. I, I like to leave a little bit of the strong movement of the colors into some of my petals on the edges there like that I do like that now what you can also do here so we have the medium white is I'm going to reach into pick up just the tiniest little bit of white out onto the tip of this roll the brush over onto the tip and do that drawing that sergeant's drawing technique and draw the edge of that petal now a little bit lighter Wipe my brush, wipe that out. Now, this is where I like to hit it and break it, so I'll quickly pull the edge in just a couple of places so I don't get it, make it look like it's a line. There, I'll quick, quick hit it and break up the edge just a bit. And I like to do that. Now, we're going to do that quite a bit more because I'm going to lighten up this rose, but I want to show you just how we, how you can do it slowly. Okay, you can do it slowly. You got plenty of time here. Let's put a, another medium white. Before we go even to more white and stuff, let's get just now. You can leave this a bigger, larger petal right in here, and it might not be a bad idea because that makes the rose a little different. We can put a softer one here, maybe a little bit more of an edge out like that. Now, I like those tones in there, I don't want to lose them, so I'm going to pinch wipe my brush. I'm going to model it with a cleaner here, just a bit of the, uh, the extender. I'm going to lightly, lightly, lightly touch right in here and lift off. Okay, and we'll get more of that pinky kind of 
pinky dirty extender because or you can even put a little bit of this warmer color in here put a little extender out here use this dirtier color in here so you just see it immediately cleans out and and uh, it's quite clear and I just t this gently right over that then push and start to soften that out wipe your brush push and start to soften that out wipe your brush push each time you touch that white you wipe your brush because you pick it up. See it right here? And if I touch it again in there, I make a little light mark, so I don't want to do that. And if I do too much, I'll put just a bit of the cool color in there and just take a couple hits across just to soften it just a bit. So now i got a petal in there with a whole bunch of really nice movement in uh, into the flower here. Now, if you're doing a whole bouquet like this, we're, what, an hour now in into the painting add talking and everything maybe 45 minutes worth of painting okay you can see it takes quite a bit of time with this particular technique to paint it but you'd make an absolutely gorgeous rose but today in contemporary painting there's one reason why i do so much contemporary stuff too because that's my main forte of selling which i am i'm a, I'm a selling artist and those i can paint really fast in 45 minutes i have a whole painting done and here i'm about three quarters of the way through a rose. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, you know, and I can really honestly sell both for about the same. So technique was I try to find stuff that allows me to paint a nice image as quickly as possible or as fast as I would like to. I'm going to now lighten up. Okay, so I'm going to come down here towards my warms and some of these colors and I'm going to start adding white and you'll start to see the real light. And let's start building some light into this painting. Now, be careful let's pick up a little bit of light here let's start right back here and let's just add a little more light to the light side of this petal here let's add a bit more light maybe even a bit more than that here let's pull that light out that way there like that i'm going to soften down sometimes i'll put that little half tone in i love the half tone half tone is halfway between your shadow and your light or halfway between those two colors and sometimes i'll pull across like that to soften it and it instantly once softens it then i'll pinch wipe my brush and if i want it lighter i pull from the light down okay and i just lightened it i just lightened that petal just a bit here and i'll step out and do little bits like that Let's take this just a little lighter. Let's pull a light petal right across the front, right like that. Boom. Let's get brave. And so now I've, when coming down like that, I stroke the brush on its chisel edge like that. And in doing so, the brush splits lightly and light comes down to here. That's not a problem. You just realize, okay, I need to get down to about that value right down there, which is right about in here. Put that in my brush pinch wipe it a little bit so it's not heavy and just pull right along the edge okay now if I want that shadow to come up which I do on this one I'll, I'll pull up like that and just bring some of that shadow up that petal see let's bring that I kind of like that I might just expand here this light petal a little bit lighter give it a little more power and let's put a softer little pink half tone right in there. Right there. And now what I'll do is I'll pinch wipe my brush, clean that out just a bit, and pull from the tip of that back in towards that bowl and leave that one like that for right now. See if I like that. Because I can bring that down. Probably bring this. And this is part of the thing I look at. I can change and paint these roses in so many different ways. And, you know, sometimes I'll copy, but I, I use it more for how are those petals kind of folding together and, and stuff like that. That's what I start to look at, you know, how they're folding together. But let's start lightening up. So we'll get more white this time, and I'll model it down here to about a value 9. I'm not using pure white. I'm going to start adding some of that now up into the front areas of my rows that I want to bring up and I kind of like that tone I like the light tone but I kind of like that tone in there I've got it now I've got white in my brush so I do have to add that extender and pinch wipe that out of the brush see it leaving the brush there 
making sure that it gets out of there. Sometimes I'll go right over to my little green pile, little dirty pile. I'll just put some very thin little dirty color in there. And I'll just what just pull right along that edge if I want that to soften out like that. And I do like that little tip of that stroke there. <laughs> that is like very contemporary. Is it like super smooth what I do way back then with that orange rose? No. But I like it and so I'm going to leave it, okay? So, and that's, you know, I'm, I mean, that's what I do. I mean, I'm going to be showing you guys this, but it's a painting i got to sell, too, so I'm going to do some stuff that I know will sell. So, but I'm going to draw a little more light here, right up against that edge. Make sure you pinch wipe that off. Get some of that softer color there. Now, you can pull across or you can lift from the shadow out. I'm going to pull across first here and just see if that softens that out enough. But if I feel like the petal needs more movement, now I've got that nice kind of orangey red, which is right up here. I'm going to take some of that nice Daravan medium. Love this, this medium. It's amazing. I'm going to touch that right into there. I'm just going to lightly kind of skip over, and then when I hit that area, pull out, and I'll pull that color further out. Do you see that? Wipe my brush lightly because I picked up white. And hit that again. See, I picked up white. See white on the tip? If you stroke that again, you'll put white back here, and slowly your rose is going to become white and opaque. You have to remember when you hit a white area and you're working in shadow, get rid of it off your brush. Pinch wipe it off your brush. Okay. And Rhonda, just for <laughs> Rhonda made the greatest comment of that. Uh, Rhonda, you made that com you made my day with your comment when you said, I'm off to Costco right now because of the last video I said these are Costco Kirkland paper towels and they are. <laughs> I get them at Costco because I go through so many of them. And she goes, I'm on my way to Costco. That made my day. That really, really made my day. Uh, but this is Costco Kirkland paper towel. They do actually make a difference. I mean, there's some of them, like these really super absorptive paper towels you can get. I don't like them. I've tried tissue paper. Uh-uh. Too absorptive. Pulls too much moisture out of your brush too fast. So try some different paper towels. I do also like just a carry cloth towel. That works too, but I don't put water in it, okay? And I know someone will say, can you put extender in it? Yes, but why waste it? It'll, it'll come like that in just a little bit. It'll become like that, you know. But if it gets too dirty, you have to uh, get a new one here. If it doesn't clean anymore, you have to get a new one here. I'm going to clean up the edge just draw see I draw the little edge there let's go back to a neutral gray put some of that in and just slide that right along and if I want to give more movement to that petal I'll put that nice dirty color into it I'll start back into here where it is and I'll pull out I hit the white I'll wipe my brush pull out pull out and soften those edges there just like that okay and I'm going to reset some of that. Like, in all that beautiful painting, I got rid of some of my yellow. I love that Daria light yellow. And so I'm going to hit that right back in there again. Just that brighter little yellow in there. Isn't that pretty? That just gives a nice little bang. There it is. Let's just put a little softer pink right down there with that. That's kind of pretty, isn't it? Now, I want that light to come down, so I'm going to pinch wipe my brush. Put a little extender, then come right over here to the lighter kind of pink and pull that down. That light, See how the light increases pulling down? So I like that light pulling down like that, see? Okay. Let's put a little more light, draw the rose, put a little more light right out here to the front, right out of this one here. I always, ooh, almost touched it again. I'm going to wipe that. See, I went too far out. I don't worry about that. Go too far out. Put a little extender. Get rid of the white. Go back up towards your grays. What color you read underneath there. What color you're reading underneath there. And just lift it out. Just like that. Okay. And it works. And I want some yellow. I'm going to put some of those two yellows that I just used. Put that into my brush here. And I'm going to start right in here, and I'm just going to lift that right off like that and let that petal come into that yellow, just kind of nice right in there. So I'm building it back up. How much more light and stuff you're going to do, that's up to you. Um, 
do you want this rose to lighten up now? Do you want that rose to lighten up? Do you want it to get lighter before you start putting on some more white? So now that I start to think about that, okay, how much light should I use in the front of my rose? Well, before I go determine that, maybe I better use the principle of simultaneous contrast and start looking at some other colors, some of my darker colors, before I finish off the rose. I'm going to grab some green and some uh, burnt sienna, maybe a touch of my blue that I used into that background. You know, let's use some, because watch what happens here to these petals. Look at how that petal starts to lighten up as I add this darker tone in through here. See that? So I add that darker that darker tone there and you can see what happens to that right so and it doesn't take that much maybe I'm just gonna push a little hint of that right out here I won't paint the whole thing and this is the contemporary part of it right like that maybe I'll almost touch it again <laughs> it's just I oh I so want to touch this painting maybe I'll just do a little push pull there and get rid of that though take that down just like that that leaves a nice little contemporary look to it but all of a sudden with that dark now look what starts to happen to that rose I could put more dark right up in there you know uh, and this is not dark dark this is you know I'm working when I'm putting that on that's like maybe value three I can go a lot darker in there if I wanted to you know uh, let's just drop a bit more right in here look at how it lightens up that that uh, beautiful uh, front petal without adding the white in there see it's not I'm not adding the white at all in there and that starts to add it up so adding some of these little little tones you know is going to make a difference or if you decide oh I'm going to make some of my leaves a little darker well let's add a little medium here to this but I'll maybe add some leaves out here and we'll push these on a little darker we'll put a few of the examples of them on first because you know, when you're adding those like that, especially we come back in here, add a little shadow. If we wanted to get a little shadow in there, action going. Let's wipe our brush. Let's touch up here and pull down. Just take a little streaky look to it. If I add that shadow to it there, that will um, simultaneous contrast, chromatic induction, that will make this rose start to look lighter. And it just takes little hits, you know, and contemporary painters may just put just little hits of the of those colors out in some areas here. And just little hits of those colors start to lighten everything up. So I'm going to push just a little bit here, some of these colors. And let's cool that just, and I haven't, I'm just using blue. I can get this super cool and cold here when I start to add uh, some of my... Uh, red violets in there and you know a very good beautiful contemporary artist would come in and push a little bit of that red violet right in there as well they just love that kind of stuff and uh, you know that's good stuff to pull and scrape with your knife to give some different looks and stuff like that or your, your scraper and everything you know it just gives you some nice beautiful looks or you can do it all completely on a smooth background if you want that to be absolutely smooth. You can do both. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things you can do, you know, with your painting. You can go a lot of different ways, stuff with your painting. Let's go back in. So I use, when I paint like this, I use six and eight flats. You know, a lot of people say, well, what's your favorite brush? What do you paint with? Well, when I do all the, pure all the Prima, you know, following one of Sergeant's rules, use, use as large a brush as possible. I'll use eights and tens, and we have the new half inch that I love. It's going to paint so much more. It's going to become my number one favorite painting brush, the ten and the half inch. But when I go back to this type of technique, which is a lot of fun, I go slightly smaller, eights, sixes, fours, because I do a lot of the petal edging and drawing of the rose that way. Okay, And you could use this technique to draw that rose exactly. You know, I'm just trying to catch some of the feeling of it. And if I wanted to catch a little more of the feeling of it, you know, there's a little bit more of a red, red, a little bit of that 
quinacridone kind of color in there, but you would push in a little bit more of the red, red tone back up in there like that. And maybe I'll take this out softly here, put a bit of the grays into that color, and just go right along the edge of it just to soften some of that. But now that rose carries a little bit of that redder tone in there. And so you can play those types of tones. You know, they, they work really, really well. Let's come back up. Let's do a front petal. We'll take medium white and white, a little bit of pink. Let's draw a front petal right up here. Um, and uh, then we'll pull down slightly. Let's draw a final little front petal here. And we'll put a bit of the gray and the pink. And I'll come right up in through here and pull that there. And I'm going to have to go, because I stroked that one with so much texture, I will actually put in a little bit of texture up into the front of that to hide some of that brushwork there. Let's gray it cool it put a little bit of that cooler shadow right in well actually no that's the yellow in there let's push some of that yellow right in there right along that edge just stroke that like that sometimes i leave it like that sometimes i like that kind of look especially if i'm very uh you know uh, casual like that i'll pinch wipe that if i want this petal to be lighter i pull down pinch wipe and pull down. Sometimes it's really nice just to put a towel you can wipe on here, but that, you know, the pinch wiping, the pinching and wiping, it takes it off real fast, and it really gives it clean off of the tip, and so that's why I use what's called the pinch wipe. Rather than just wiping my brush, the pinch wipe cleans it out quicker and faster. There. So I'll leave that right there. That's kind of pretty. And um, then let's come in. Let's lighten up a bit more. Let's draw a fun little one coming right out here like that. Somewhere right like that. You notice I got a nice little blob of texture right there. And uh, paint that isn't so great. But I'll pick up some of my yellows because I'm going to want to restate that yellow again. It's going to happen, you know. The thing is, you, you're, going to, you're going to do things that are going to take out some of your statements that you made before. But, and then you, you just repeat them. That's all. That's all we have to do. Is just repeat those statements again. I mean, that one went just a bit far, so I'll use a little bit of that shadow and just take a bit of it out. I, I like that look right there, so I'll probably leave that. That's kind of a tangent line there between the two, so I might take this one back just a bit more. In other words, they were ending and starting at the same point. Let's take a little shadow out. Here I'm just going to take a little shadow out. Sometimes I don't use my stick if I want the mark to be really casual, especially as I come down towards the shadow areas there. I'll leave it like that. Let's put a little bit more, let's do the petal edge technique, so we'll push the paint up here onto the corner. Let's draw a little bit of the lighter little edge. We'll give that to that petal. Let's put a little bit of the gray, some of our medium. Always feed that medium, otherwise your paints are going to dry. And just pull that right along that edge there. That's kind of pretty. Let's edge with the light. The tiniest little bit is all I need over here. See how tiny little bit and how easy that is to draw the edge of a petal? Because that's all you're doing is drawing the edge here. And that's not good that all those are coming to a point right there. Sometimes it starts out as a great idea and then you just kind of mess it up. Let's just pull a little shadow right back into there. Let's change the direction of that one. Put just a tiny... Everyone say tiny bit of light here, and let's just change the direction of this one, making it the primary one sitting on top. Now they're not all pulling to a point. That's something I look for. That's something that my left brain always does, and I look for it, though, when it's going to happen, because I know I'm going to do it, because that's just the nature of how my brain works. I'll put a little medium white. I don't want to go quite as light. Let's go a little medium white with it this time and pull a soft little petal here. I'll pull a bit right to where I think I can get away with it. Then I'll go switch back to that nice cooler shadow. Maybe a little green, 
little red violet pull shadow out and let's pull shadow out right there shadow out it makes a nice tipped fun painting rose now you can come through and you can make the rose lighter and lighter and lighter because I've only used a little bit of white so I can decide now and this is one of the hardest things but this is one of the great things about acrylics you know when I have students that are le learning like this and we're doing a rose like this more as a study um, and you know there's a lot of times I'll leave it like this and my students buy the studies like this they love it, and it's a great it's a great painting to buy at a stage like this, and it's a great one to do that. I was talking about that in the Heritage Group on on our our Miwi uh, site today about the studies. This studies leaving a painting that's incomplete so that you can study it, and your students love that. I love it. That's what I look for, and uh, artists always do that. They they uh, leave some for studies because let me tell you in six months you're not going to remember if you're growing and pushing yourself you're not going to remember how you painted it and leaving yourself some studies halfway through really help you you know really help you decide later on what you did you know so i'm going to uh, and there i just did that again that's that stupid left brain i'm gonna put a little shadow right here just thin that right back down out again let's push that edge a little bit lighter right in there just leave that down boy I almost touched that again so it's I'm building the light but you can see here okay if I put white white onto my paint onto my brush here okay you can see I'm not really white white see that's looking like a white rose but it's not really white I mean I can I can come out here let's put a little more white right in here just a bit more and I'll increase the white so I'll pull in there I can do that and before I decide just how much more white I usually follow the rule of simultaneous contrast and decide do I need any more shadows first so before I finish my whites on how much white I'm going to put on a flower I make sure I get my shadows out there and I justify uh, that kind of stuff there okay so Anyway, that really kind of, you know, paints that up. Now, let's just do real quick soft. Let's finish this up a bit. Might leave some of this as a study, too. <clears throat> let's go into the back here. Gray this down. My beautiful green burnt sienna. I'm using as a kind of a gray. Let's put a little rosebud back here. Something like that. And boom. Mix uh, some medium greens. Let's see, some nice, beautiful grays. See, those grays are so important here. I'm going to leave some of these edges there. And <clears throat> I'm going to paint this flower mostly medium white here. So this is getting more into the pure olive primer that I like to paint with the casual nature of it. Once you set up one of these roses here this way. Now, what I'll do is I'll pinch it because I want to soften some of that out. And I'll pinch wipe that out and do a little bit of push-pull around to soften so the push-pull softens any of the, the looks that you want to have there. Let's take a little warm light edge and draw a few little petal edges. See, I just use the edge. Sometimes if I'm doing quick, I'll draw with that edge and then I'll reach the brush over to the other side and do the softening with it. I do that now. Beginners, I don't recommend that you do that because it's too frustrating for you. But for experienced painters, you can do that and it increase the speed of your, your painting just a bit. And I say that not in a, for a bunch of reasons. You know, for so many times I've told you during the challenges and everything, timing and speed are important to the casual nature of your flowers. If you slow down too much, 
and don't keep pushing yourself forward, they're going to look stiff. That's just going to happen. It happens to me. It happens to everybody. Okay? So just keep that in mind. There's a reason why we paint fast. We paint fast for a couple of different reasons. So I'll pull that in. But see, now that first one is my queen, and she's kind of controlling what I'm doing. And yes, I wiped out that one leaf, and I get to move it over and put it back in. But that queen is kind of controlling everything that I'm doing there on that uh, particular rose. And this painting here, I'm going to put a little pink up, shadow up. Let's increase the cool shadow down. So... See, if I'm not explaining everything, which I like to do with you guys, I love to explain everything. I'll paint them faster. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things in, since I've painted that one orange one that I've tried to do is increase my speed of everything that I paint because I realize that speed is so very important. Let's put a little bit of white into some of this. And if you notice, I'm painting this back one with a slightly larger brush. That helps keep it softer, too. Where it won't be quite as detailed as the front one. But it is, you can still make it quite a bit detailed here. And you can make the whole thing very soft, very pretty. You know, you're in control of it. You're the artist. You determine the look. I'll do that push-pull a lot, though. Let's just draw some petals around here. There, pull that in. Let's put a little cooler color, a little red, quinacridone. Just a touch of that color happening right up in here to give a better harmony between those two roses. Maybe a uh, little light petal right up over here that closes up over the tip of that one. And uh, I can draw that. See the nice little light edge there? Might be a little heavy, but I can draw that edge. And uh, then take some of the pink up to soften it. Take a little bit of that out. Pinch wipe my brush. Take a bit of that out there. Maybe increase the shadow right up over here. Pull that through. Wipe my brush. Set it down, do a little push-pull, and that just softens it just a bit, just like you know what you're doing. Let's put a bit more light right here. Pull that in. There, a little touches. Sometimes I just touch it a couple times just to break it a bit. Let's leave that just lost over there on that edge. That's a bit of a sharp... I'm kind of determining right now whether or not to leave it, and I think I'm going to add a second rounding little petal here so it rounds that center a bit more in that row so it's not quite so pointed. It looks like you could jab your eye out with that thing, so it's a little too pointed. So I'm going to pull that down and pull this one up just a bit, get rid of the pointed nature of that. Put a little light, lighter pink pulling stroke up there, maybe a bit more light right across the front there. There we go. Let's draw that one. So we go to the edge, draw the petal across there. That's better. That, that works. That works. And um, maybe you want just a bit of that red color coming out a bit over here. Takes that nice pinky color of that rose right over there. That's kind of pretty. Yeah, I mean, you could put a darker in there, but I don't think it's necessary. Do you need any more petals? Well, the more petals you start to get, I mean, it's you can just leave them more impressionistic. So here I'll do a, one that's heavily influenced by what I did 12 years ago. And then that one's heavily influenced by how I paint now. And that's okay. You can see both of them. But this is what this is how artists create all these different looks, see? You know, I'm not afraid to, in the middle of a painting, 
as long as I'm getting color harmony, I'm not afraid to change the technique. You know, as long as I got good color harmony, I'm okay. Now, I might want to take, let's take a touch of that blue and that medium white, which makes it kind of a blue green, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna in that. And let's just pull some of that out over here a little different further out, maybe into the roses just a bit in some areas. Break those edges there and soften that effect there. Let's take the green and burnt sienna here. Soften some of that. A little bit of extender, some of the nice open medium here. Let's just push some of this around. Maybe a little bit more burnt sienna. I love that yellow in there too. Maybe some of the dirty color here. Big fanatic that leaves should carry the colors of the combination of the composition here. Um, I really like them too. Let's come down here. Pull that down. Put a few color marks of this further down. Boy, I'm just going to leave a lot of this uh, nice uh, negative space in here as well. See, and see, you a, a good contemporary painter would do stuff like this. Just leave that contemporary look, you know. Um, let's take some of that nice burnt sienna, a little bit of our reds and greens here, and just add a touch or two of this moving through here. This gets me back. See, this gets me back to my contemporary look that a lot of my collectors like. So I'm doing a bit of both. <laughs> a bit of both. That's what I love to do. And, you know, and, and it really is true, guys, that, you know, you can't be able to copy this, okay? You can catch the feeling. Catch what I do. Lighten it up enough in yourself that you can paint your look. You know, I study... I, I've studied and I've taken with with thousands of painters and studying there and I can never paint like them and I'm not but what I'm trying to do is learn how they manipulate color how they manipulate edges now today you're learning how to draw some pet some petal edges how to set the brush down do a little push pull of the technique you know and uh, how to slowly work your colors up pulling light down increases the lightness pulling shadow up increases the shadow and you're learning some of these things. And here are little color marks. You know, I, I love little color marks. Here, that's the contemporary look of it, you know. Um, there's all kinds of things that you're learning. But to paint it, to copy it, you're not going to be able to do it. But you're going to be able to take this design. And if you lighten up and, and do it your way and stuff, you'll paint a real pretty little painting here that, you know, has some of the flair of, contemporary and some of the other looks that we do and uh, you know it could be a heck of a lot of fun and let it be yours you know move it to it's yours that's the ultimate thing and, and I love to teach it in there you know so many of the you know I'll be honest with you so many of the uh, students and stuff that I have and I have thousands of students over the years that I've talked to and inevitably, 90% of those that are painting it for a hobby and stuff, they don't do that. But 90% of them think they don't make their careers until they create their own look. And that's not true at all. That's not true at all. I painted for 20 years copying the masters and did DVDs and everything on how to paint the masters. That's not true at all. And I made my career for that. People came to my seminars and stuff, and I traveled around the world, you know. I went down to... South America and taught master's techniques and, Thai, and uh, Taiwan and Korea and all throughout Australia and all throughout Europe. No, it, they, you don't make your, you can, you can copy the masters and make your own career out of that. And that's great. And you can do that. But what you do is you learn techniques. And if you learn enough of them, then you, and you fill them up here in your memory banks, then what happens is that, um, you start to step out onto your own because you have something to draw from. 
So you take as much as you can. You paint as much as you can. You start out copying, as not copying, copying, but learning that technique. Paint what it is here, but don't expect it to be a perfect copy, you know. And, uh, and you grow and you build that way, you know. I'm going to put a little bit of a lighter yellow green. Put some of my nice, by that Darvan medium, it's just wonderful. Um, put some of that, and I'm going to, I've got too much of a line right there in the front of my flower. Now I can either grow my petals, or I can break it with some lighter color coming out, like there's a lighter leaf or something like that there. And that'll help break that line because it is... I'm creating a line of light color contrast. I don't want to do as I don't want to take it as light as a rose, but it's a light color contrast pulling this way instead of pulling that way along that line. So it'll break that line here. That's all stuff you learn, right? You need to learn some things about design and design movement. That's why I did an entire video series. Um, God, it's like 20 hours of design design elements that the masters used and design that contemporary painters use and you know what do you do when you're drawing landscapes and florals and all kinds of stuff and we did all kinds of different looks there and so I'm just I'm watching the this edge here against the edge of that rose against the the power of that horizontal line to see how much movement I need there to take away that that just a bit and I think I got it sometimes I like that little vein line just a hint of that vein line and then I think I'm gonna I'm an hour and 40 minutes into this painting which is a lot a lot longer than I normally do but I hope you've enjoyed it I've had a lot of fun showing you guys some of the things I used to do and I will probably bring some of this back again because it is it is time to bring some of it back It'll be... I almost touched it again. <laughs> Jeez. Ooh. I set myself a goal. I said, you know what? I'm not going to touch this painting. And I got rid of my water. And I mostly, I almost touched that again. Those are habits. See, <laughs> you know, When someone said, oh, you know, you got habits. Yeah, we do. It's my habit to touch that. You'll have habits with your... And that's the thing, guys. See? And I tell you all the time, you'll have habits with your brushes. See? And halfway through the painting, those habits are going to come back. They're going to come back and they're going to bite you. And you might not even notice it directly until you've pretty much uh, wiped out part of a rose with your old habits. That's going to happen. That's why I say, it, I say it takes 25 roses or so to break a habit, to stop it, because those habits are going to sneak right back in. They're going to sneak right back in. Hi, girly. Hi. Come here. Yeah, they're going to sneak this, my girl, right here. <laughs> She's saying it's been, and her sister, she's saying it's been an hour and 45 minutes, Dad. We need to go outside and play in the snow, don't you? So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm going to go take Kipper and Callie here. I'm going to take the two of them. You, Kipper, you can't see your sister because you're hogging all the camera. I'm going to go take them out, run them. I hope you've enjoyed the video. hope you've enjoyed this. hope it gives you some different ideas for doing things. And like I said in one of the, the posts, this, hi, Kelly, did you cook for that? Um, like I said in one of the posts this morning that I made over in our group, and I hope some of you go over and join our group, um, that you got to keep it fun. It's got to be fun. All of the masters all said, and that's one of the things I was listening to uh, a, a Western artist, a very a wonderful modern day master Western artist, and his teacher that was before him said one of the things that you must do is keep uh, painting fun. If you keep it fun, and he says, and, and always the last of the strokes, just like this, the last of the strokes need to be fun. It all needs to be fun. And when it's fun and not frustrating, that's when the life and the energy takes over into your painting. And, um, yeah, it just needs to stay fun. And I, I hope that you can find it. When you're learning, there's that frustration, though, that gets in there. Don't let that defeat you. Don't let that defeat you. That frustration. We all get into that frustration. I, that happened, happened to me the other day. It happens all the time. It happens to everyone. But uh, keep it fun. You know, try some of this. 
and keep it fun and realize that you're going to have some habits and you're going to need to push out those habits. Right, girls? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go run my dogs. I'll see you guys on the next one. This All La Prima series is going to continue on for the next year. I'm going to run you through all different kinds of stuff. Landscapes, everything else like that. And, uh, you know, if there's some stuff, techniques or something like that or questions that you have, you know, drop it into the comments down there. I love it when you guys make comments because I so enjoy those. And I help, I think it makes a better connection between you. I get just as much inspiration off of you and uh, as as you get from me. So I love those comments. I sit down and like I said before, I read those comments every morning. So, you know, this, I, I hope you take the time to do that. And uh, we'll take in some different looks and we'll look at some doing some different things, okay? Yes, I promise, girls, I'm going to shut up. Okay, I'll see you guys uh, on the next one.